Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about building an insanely fast speech recognition system by the distillation of the Whisper model. This project was led by Sankit along with Patrick von Platten. It's all open source. Our main focus is going to be the Whisper model for speech recognition. Don't worry if you haven't seen too much speech recognition before, this model looks very similar to most of the other models in deep learning these days. The way it works is that we're going to take in a speech signal. You can think about this as just a recording of the sound wave, and we're gonna send it in through an encoder model. The encoder model is just going to look like a transformer with many different blocks stacked on top of each other. From this encoder, we'll then feed this with cross intention into a decoder system. The decoder system is just going to output each token step by step. The decoder part of this model looks just like a standard language model, instead of being conditioned on, say, some text to translate or an image to caption, it's just going to be um, using this speech signal directly. Each of these output token predictions will be made step by step, and generally we'll just use greedy decoding to output each of the next tokens. When the Whisper model came out, it was quite striking because, well, one, it was very simple, and two, it performed extremely well. If we look at the Hugging Face speech recognition leaderboard, we'll see that Whisper has the top spot in terms of word error rate. Honestly, it's pretty cool that OpenAI open sourced this model. In this work, we're going to be interested in serving the Whisper model efficiently. There are many different ways to compress models, such as weight pruning, quantization, forms of early exit, or efficient fine tuning. Today, though, we're going to focus on compressing the model using knowledge distillation. Among these different approaches, knowledge distillation has some particularly appealing properties. In general, it's going to allow us to train a small student to match the performance of a larger teacher. But unlike some of these other methods, it doesn't impose any constraint on our final model structure. We're going to be able to change the structure of the model itself to choose one that we think we can run the most efficiently. This will be particularly useful because we can take into account various properties of how we will serve the model in order to produce a form that we can actually run fast on the devices we're interested in. Before we talk about Whisper though, let's review some of the key terminology in knowledge distillation. To make things simple, let's assume we're doing a three class classification problem. There are classes A, B, and C. We'll condition on some input X and have to make a prediction Y. We'll represent y as a one-hot vector, delta sub y, that points to one of these three classes. We'll also start with two different classifiers. We'll have our teacher model, which I'll represent as t theta. This is the better model that we've trained on lots of data and probably lots of parameters. We'll also have our student model, which I'll represent as p sigma. This is the model we'd like to train and it may have many fewer parameters and perhaps even an entirely different architecture than our teacher model. One option is to just train the student model directly as a supervised model. In this case, we're entirely ignoring the teacher. We can write out our standard objective in the following form. We'd like to find the best parameter sigma for our student model that get us as close as possible in KL distance to the true answer. This is a slightly different form than you may be used to seeing for our loss function, but it corresponds exactly to the standard cross entropy or maximum likelihood loss. I like using this KL form because we can visualize what the model is trying to learn. We'll visualize it in terms of a simplex where each point represents a distribution. Points at the top are distributions that favor A, points to the left favor B, and points to the right favor C. A one-hot vector is represented by a point at the bottom right, directly only over the C component. In particular, given a supervised example, delta Y, shown on the left of the slide, you can see on the right-hand part of the slide what this loss favors in terms of a final P sigmoid. If we can get to the blue area, we'll get a better loss, whereas if we're in the red area, where we make incorrect predictions, then we'll have a much worse loss. Now let's introduce the idea of knowledge distillation. If we have a teacher model, p theta, and that teacher model is given some input x, it's going to output a point on this simplex. This represents its distribution over the various classes a, b, and c. The way knowledge distillation works is it encourages our student model 
p sigma to choose a value near the teacher point on the simplex. So if we look on the right hand side, we can see how the loss favors points that end up near the teacher model and disfavors points on the corners of the simplex itself. We can of course both use distillation as well as our true classes. We can do this by constructing a distribution that interpolates between the true class in our supervised data and the distribution that the teacher outputted. Here the KL term takes into account this interpolation and we get a point represented by the x on the left simplex that represents a distribution that's somewhere in between what the teacher produced and the supervision itself. On the right, we can see that that produces a loss that encourages the student model to choose the correct class, but do so with a little bit less confidence than our original supervised training. But wait, um, something should bother you about this approach. We've been talking about standard multi-class classification, but as I noted at the beginning of this talk, Whisper is a model that produces full-on sentences based on some conditioning. This means we have to slightly change our approach and use a method known as sequential knowledge distillation. This is a standard method that's used for machine translation, summarization, and other conditional generation tasks. The high-level idea is going to be to generate an entire sequence from our teacher model and use that sequence as a way of distilling the student model. Let me motivate first why this is necessary at all. When predicting sequences, we can think of delta y as being over the space of all possible sentences that you might output. We can write our standard KL objective in the same form as for multi-class classification, where now delta y is just in a much larger simplex, representing all possible output sentences. One nice property of autoregressive generation is that we can factor this problem into the KL of each individual prediction in a row. This is why we often talk about language models as doing next word prediction, because the task of next word prediction and this loss function is equivalent to doing prediction over the entire sequence. In this case, we can reduce standard training to local classification. You might think that this naturally applies to knowledge distillation as well, but unfortunately this is not the case. If instead of thinking about the KL to the true sentence, we instead think about the KL to the teacher's prediction, we no longer can apply the same factorization. The problem is that P theta really is the distribution over all possible output sentences. And if we want to use the KL between this massive probability distribution, it's very hard to fit our student model to that full distribution directly, or frankly, even to write that distribution down we can't actually factor it into the KL of each of the individual predictions because this ignores all the other paths that we may have taken. So we can't really write knowledge distillation over sentences as knowledge distillation over next words. So do we have any hope at all of doing knowledge distillation in these cases? Well, the full KL really is just vastly intractable. If we really wanted to minimize this objective, we would have to sum over all possible sequences in a global model. One way to think about this is that the simplex we saw earlier would now have an exponential number of vertices, and so even kind of figuring out where the teacher distribution is in that simplex would be vastly intractable. However, what we can do is we can make some approximations over what the teacher might be doing. The simplest approximation is to just assume the teacher is going to put most of its mass into its argmax prediction. In practice, we refer to this approach as pseudo-labeling. We simply find the argmax teacher prediction and then fit the student parameters to this sequence. Here we don't have to consider all possible sentences the teacher might want to output, but only the one it most preferred. In practice, we can do a similar trick as we saw earlier, where instead of producing only the argmax teacher distribution, we take only the predictions that were close to the ground truth. This corresponds to a form of interpolation between the ground truth answers and the one the teacher most preferred. This method has been verified to work across many different tasks, and in general produces a better distilled model than simply using a next word knowledge distillation. In this paper, we're going to take a joint approach. 
we'll have two parts of the objective. One that does standard KL divergence directly with the teacher's output distribution, and another that is simply predicting the pseudo label produced by the teacher model. This gives us the ability to follow along with the teacher's sequential predictions, but also to match the local KL divergence that the teacher produces for the next word prediction. In implementation, the way this works is we simply regenerate our training data based on the teacher model, and then retrain our student model based on these pseudo labels. So now let's get back to the problem of speech recognition. If you recall, the whisper model is an encoder decoder model. It has a large set of encoder blocks and a large set of decoder blocks. The parameters are roughly equally distributed between the encoder and the decoder. So if we wanted to simply reduce parameters, we could equally reduce the blocks for the encoder and the decoder. However, in practice, we're not particularly interested in reducing parameters. We're interested in making the model fast. One observation from machine translation is that a lot of the work is done by the encoder, but a lot of the compute is in the decoder. If we can produce a model that has a very shallow decoder, then we can keep most of the encoder and still get much of the speed benefits. In fact, it's often been shown that models with very small decoders are just as fast as some more complex approaches, such as completely non-autoregressive models. Motivated by this approach, we're really going to focus on the decoder blocks of Whisper. We'd like to make these as small as possible so we can run them quickly in practice. This motivates the following architecture for distill Whisper. We're going to keep the encoder blocks basically as is. We'll run these once and basically use them throughout our decoder. On the decoder side, we're going to basically remove almost all the decoder blocks. In our final model, we'll just keep around one or two decoder layers and use those to generate the next word. We also found that we didn't actually even need to train the encoder block as part of the student. We're just going to let the student use the teacher's encoder blocks as is and lock their parameters. The only part that we'll train with distillation is the new decoder blocks. So we'll basically train these two layers using the distillation approach I've showed earlier and let them use the encoder block as is. A final observation we made is that these models are often used to generate very long text on the decoder side. We can make this faster, but it's still relatively slow to do this process in serial. For speech recognition, we often don't need to take into account the whole sequence at once, so we found that we could make this process slightly faster by parallelizing it. In practice, the way we do this is to take, say, 30 seconds of speech as a snippet, use the encoder to decode each of these snippets in parallel, and then reassemble them into very long generated text on the output. This was particularly effective for experiments in longer form speech recognition. Great, uh, let's look at some experiments. So we distilled this model using a collection of speech datasets from a wide variety of different sources. Our goal here was to produce a model that was very robust to different aspects of speech and to still have the model run very fast. To do this, we use the distillation approach described earlier to regenerate the labels for a large set of different corpora. The way we did this is we simply ran the large whisper model on these different speech settings and we threw away any outputs that had a very bad word error rate. This ensured that our outputs were relatively close to the true supervision, while still taking into account the Whisper teacher generations. This leads to our main results. Whisper comes in five different varieties, ranging from tiny to large, with large achieving the best word error rates. Both the large and medium models get a word error rate around 10 for short form speech recognition. For longer form recognition, their word error rate is a little higher, but we still see that the bigger models perform the best. We produced two distilled models, which we refer to as distilled medium and distilled large. Both of these have fewer parameters than the medium and large models, but remember the main goal was to produce a smaller decoder so that we could speed up these models in practice. Our first observation is that both our distilled medium and distilled large models 
perform very close to the original versions. They're particularly competitive on long form speech recognition, but are also pretty close in terms of short form word error rate. More importantly though, they both significantly speed up the models in practice. We see a nearly five times speed up with the distilled large model compared to the original large form model, and even greater speed ups for the medium model. This is the main headline approach of the video that you can get very large speed ups using distillation with only small decreases in terms of accuracy. In practice though, robustness is critical for speech recognition. We want these models to be used and deployed in a variety of different circumstances. And various papers have questioned whether these sorts of distillation approaches maintain the robustness of our original models. To test this out, we run our distilled model across various different data sets. We find that in general, the distilled performance is very close to the original large model across different data sets and domains. In some of these data sets, the still is worse, but in others, we actually find that the still model is better. Uh, we attribute these improvements to seeing lots more data that was generated from the large model, which allows it to correct some small errors. In general, though, we find that the average performance is relatively close in practice and should be usable in many different scenarios. Additionally, it's critical that the model be robust to different forms of noise. We have several graphs in the paper that look at the performance of the distilled model as artificial noise is added to the system. In this graph, a lower is better and left to right represents adding more noise. The distilled models are represented by the red line and purple line. We can see that these lines nearly match the green circles, which represent the robust performance of the original whisper system. One thing I really like about speech recognition is that it's extremely useful. And one of the fun parts about this project is that almost immediately when these models were released, people began to utilize them in all sorts of interesting applications. One of my favorites is Whisper Web, which is a web browser implementation of the Whisper system. This actually runs in your browser and can actually do speech recognition on your own local machine without you downloading any software. The implementers of this system immediately took into account the distilled Whisper models and were able to show that they were able to get a very large speed up without really decreasing the accuracy of these systems. Another really neat application is Insanely Fast Whisper. This is a command line application that allows you to transcribe huge audio files just from your terminal. This system was able to transcribe 150 minutes of audio in only about a minute. Uh, this is an extremely useful tool that allows you to kind of convert any sort of audio file directly to text. And it has about uh, 4,000 stars on GitHub despite being only released a couple months ago. Um, so in conclusion, um, sequential knowledge distillation is a really effective tool. You can use it for all sorts of tasks, including speech models. In practice, by simply training on a large set of distilled data, we were able to maintain the robustness of the original Whisper model but increase the speed by almost five times. There are lots of different ways this can be applied for both speech recognitions and other systems. Uh, in general, you can use distillation to change the architecture of models and produce ones that fit best on your device or for your applications. If you're interested in using this approach, uh, check out the GitHub page for the project, as well as a paper on the archive with many more details about how this works in practice and how to build great speech recognition systems. Thanks so much.